Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, and uh, we're going to be reading Origins, continuing on chapter 3. Why would we assign more value to Adam's ability to make us wrong than Jesus' ability to make us right? What Paul is describing here would be would be like Jesus walking into, into the courtroom of God to pay the fine for Adam's for Adam's sin throwing away away throwing a gold brick down on the desk and saying this should be more than more than do it and it, and it did verse 15 continues with the comparison it's true that many died because of a one man's transgression, but how much greater will God's grace and his gracious gift of acceptance overflow to many because of what one man, Jesus the Messiah, did for us, and this free flowing gift imparts to us much more than what was given to us through the one who sinned for because of one transgression we are all facing a death sentence with a verdict of guilty but this gracious gift leaves us free from our many failures and brings us into the perfect righteousness of God. This is a great great book guys so I hope you guys are following along. Acquitted with with the words not guilty and I'm I'm very guilty of several things in my life. Death once held us in its grip and by the blunder of one man called Adam death uh, reigned as king over over humanity but now how much more are we held in the grip of grace and continue reigning as kings in life Enjoying our regal freedom through through the gift of perfect righteousness in the one and only Jesus, the Messiah. In other words, Jesus as condemnation came upon all people through one transgression. So through one righteous act of Jesus sacrifice the perfect righteousness that makes us right with God and leads us to a vicious a victorious life is now available to all one man's disobedience opened the door for all humanity to become sinners so also one man's Obedience opened the door for many to be made perfectly right with God and acceptable to Him. If you look at Romans chapter 5, verses 17, it says, Death reigned in the earth since the fall of Adam, but because, but because of what Jesus made available to us, it says we can reign again as kings in life. In other words, our dominion mandate from Genesis, I, I return to us when Jesus made it possible for the Spirit of God to return to us. <clears throat> While I understand the world and much of creation is still subject to, to the fall of man. Those 
of us in Christ are new creations in him. We are not just old sinners. We are righteous, redeemed children in our spirits and once again possessors of our Heavenly Father's DNA. Because you have be been born again, two wonderful things happened. You got born out of the Adams family and you got born into the family of God. Dwayne Sheriff shares a great comparison of everything you need to know about who used to be in, in, in Adam and who are now in Christ. And here's the little deal there. If you can see it. Okay. And it says at the bottom, you've been sealed. In John chapter 6, verses 27, Jesus said, The Father had set his seal upon him. I believe this happened in Luke chapter 3, verses 21 through 22. When Jesus comes up from his own water baptism, the heavens, upon, the heavens open, the Holy Spirit alights upon him in the form of a, of a dove, and God declares... You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit in and upon Jesus was proof. He had come from God and he was his father's son. The Holy Spirit is also how he was able to, to go about doing good and healing all who were who were oppressed of the devil as acts chapter 10 verses 38 states in second corinthians chapter 1 verses 21 through 22 and ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 the Bible says you and I have been sealed with the same Holy Spirit of promise according to the Strong's Concordance. These are the same Greek words for seal as appeared in John chapter 6 verses 27 with Jesus. It, it connotes not only ownership but also that he has given you a signet ring which allows a child to represent represent their father this seal assets to a father's authority and validation second corinthians chapter 1 verses 21 through 22 says now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 says, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with, with the Holy Spirit of promise. When you look at the restoration work of Christ, as well as you being sealed, validated, and accepted via via. God's Holy Spirit. There's only one conclusion. God put you here to know Him and make Him known and crush every 
gate, hell throws up in front of you. As Francis Chan stated, we ought to be able to drop any Christian off in any city in the world and they should effectively grow in Jesus, walk with the Holy Spirit, make disciples, establish spiritual family, and carry on the mission of Jesus. Five points to remember. Jesus restored you all the way back to your Father, not just half, halfway back. By definition of a new creation, you are not who you used to be. For all Adam's sin did to you, the grace of Jesus Christ is far greater. You have you have been given authority to act on your Father's behalf. And here's the last one. The Holy Spirit is God's seal of approval in and upon you. Thank you.